Public Eye News, Escanaba Public Safety celebrates three years of the ANGEL program and Escanaba Public Schools consider consolidation. Later on in today's program, we'll take a look at your weather and Jillian will be back with a look at sports as we head into spring break here at NMU. Hi, I'm Todd Rose. And I'm Jillian Wormlinger and this is Public Eye News. Public Safety's ANGEL program is nearing its three-year anniversary. Since the implementation of the program, 42 addicts have sought the help of Public Safety. 20 of them have completed the treatment. Delta County residents who suffer from addiction can approach Escanaba Public Safety asking for help treating their addiction. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer, you can contact Lieutenant John Goodwer at jgoodwer at escanaba.org. An Escanaba area public schools is considering closing one of its buildings. This is due to low levels of state funding, declining en enrollment, and sinking funds. Escanaba area schools have grades one through six spread out across three buildings. Superintendent Kobe Fletcher brought potential options of buildings to close to the board at their most recent meeting. Fletcher estimates that if they close the upper elementary school, they could save around $400,000 a year, and if they close Sioux Hill Elementary, they could save $320,000. That money that they would save from the closure would go towards student activities as well as maintenance. Business on Tap returned to the Ordock Brewing Company this Wednesday, sponsored by Innovate Marquette and Smart Zone. The event gives local business professionals a chance to come together, socialize, and learn how to better their own businesses. A presentation was held for attendees to learn how to leave a more lasting impression on all different aspects of their business. This was, excuse me, this was presented by Patrick Dignett, co-owner of Double Trouble Entertainment. Dignett states that this event is a good time for the community to come together and talk about the different aspects of the local business market. Next month's event will be held on March 27th and will be hosted by executive producer of Elegant Seagulls, John Spigarelli. And the VFW Post 5670 in Gwynn is soon to hold a fundraiser that will raise money to send veterans on the UP Honor Flight. Chad Coughlin, a veteran himself, organizes the event and says all veterans should have a chance to go on an Honor Flight. The event will be on Saturday, March 16th at the VFW Post in Gwynn from 1 p.m. to close. Tickets can be purchased at the door and attendees are welcome to contribute more. Raffles, door prizes, and 50-50 raffle and more will occur as well as five local bands playing all day long. Tuesday, United Methodist Church delegates from all over the world voted to uphold the ban on same-sex marriage and the ordination of LGBTQ clergy within the church. Delegates also voted to strengthen the enforcement on the bans, as well as encourage people who oppose the bans to leave the church. Local churches recognize the high importance of the issue and say it's more important now than ever before to stick together. As a result of the vote, individual churches are unable to decide whether they want to adopt gay-friendly policies on local and regional levels. Even with the result of this vote, pastors at Marquette Hope say they are and will be continuing to accept all people. And the captain of the Marquette Fire Department says crews received a report of a food truck on fire inside the garage just after midnight. Heavy areas of smoke were seen coming out of the building when officers arrived to the scene. Crews are still battling hot spots from the fire. Motorists are being asked to avoid the area while cleanup efforts continue to take place. As of now, it is unknown how the fire started, but no injuries have been reported. And stay tuned because after this break, we'll be back with your national and international news. First there was darkness, then endless blue, and then an island, a place of beauty and charm, history and heroism, survival and rebirth. You fall in love with Mackinac Island. It gets in your soul. It's not something that goes away. And when I'm away from Mackinac Island, I miss it deeply. Watch Mackinac, our famous island. Saturday at 8 p.m. on Public TV 13. And welcome back. 
The operative at the center of the election fraud scandal of a North Carolina congressional race was arrested on Wednesday on the charges of illegal ballot handling and conspiracy, with four accomplices also being charged. Leslie McCray Dallas, Jr., 63, is accused of directing workers to collect and mail in other people's absentee ballots during the 2018 Republican congressional primary and the 2016 general election. It is illegal for anyone to accept the voter or a uh, close relative to handle any mail ballots. Prosecutors are still investigating evidence of tampering by Dallas and others on behalf of the GOP candidate Mark Harris during last year's midterm election. The indictment re represents a scandal that has cast a shadow upon election integrity and leaves a congressional seat unfilled for months. Dallas has not posted bond as of early Wednesday evening. And President Trump is on his way back home after his two-day summit with Kim Jong-un in Vietnam. CBS's Stephen Pornoy is in Hanoi with details about what the two leaders did not accomplish. I'm never afraid to walk from a deal. President Trump wrapped up his summit with Kim Jong-un earlier than expected. A joint agreement which the White House press office said would be signed never materialized. Basically, uh, they wanted the sanctions lifted in their entirety, and we couldn't do that. They were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted, but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that. The summit featured extraordinary exchanges between the North Korean dictator and the American press. Kim was asked by one journalist if he's ready to denuclearize. If I'm not willing to do that, I won't be here right now. <laughs> Good answer. Wow, that might be the best answer you've ever heard. Throughout the summit, President Trump has stressed he's in no rush as they try to make the right deal. Speed is not that important to me. I very much appreciate no testing of nuclear rockets, missiles, any of it. The top U.S. goal has been to receive concrete steps from the North to dismantle its nuclear program. North Korea seeks relief from economic sanctions. He has a certain vision, and it's not exactly our vision, but it's a lot closer than it was a year ago. It certainly was surprising to see the North Korean dictator take questions from the American press. The president at one point admonished reporters to not raise their voices with Chairman Kim. One journalist asked if the North Koreans might be willing to accept a U.S. office in Pyongyang for American diplomats. Both Chairman Kim and President Trump said they'd be open to the idea. Stephen Portnoy, CBS News, Hanoi. On Tuesday, U.S. environmental regulators announced they are leaving intact an air quality standard for power plant pollution that can worsen asthma in children, despite calls by health advocates. The move keeps in place a threshold for sulfur dioxide pollution established in 2010 by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency under President Obama. Advocacy groups, including the American Lung Association, had urged EPA to lower the amount of the pollution it allows, but the EPA rejected the calls for change. Between 2010 and 2016, sulfur dioxide emissions nationwide dropped 64 percent, yet areas of 17 states remained out of compliance with the 2010 standard last month. Government officials first must figure out what, which power plants are causing the pollution and then work with companies on plans to reduce the emission levels. And Michael Cohen, Donald Trump's former lawyer, called the president a racist and a con man who used his inner circle to illegally cover up a politically damaging affair during six hours of testimony yesterday. Today, just before leaving Vietnam, President Trump offered his first reaction to Cohen's allegations. CBS News' Mark Liverman has the latest. President Trump reacted to Michael Cohen's dramatic testimony for the first time during a press conference in Hanoi Thursday. He lied a lot, but it was very interesting because he didn't lie about one thing. He said, no collusion with the Russian hoax. Testifying under oath yesterday, Michael Cohen said he didn't know whether the president colluded with Russia during the last presidential campaign, but did provide financial evidence on other allegations. He asked me to pay off an adult film star with whom he had an affair and to lie about it to his wife. Cohen said President Trump reimbursed him for that payment, totaling $130,000 in installments, so it would look like a retainer. Republicans weren't buying it, noting he's about to serve a three-year prison sentence for lying to Congress, as well as for charges of bank and tax fraud. Liar, liar, pants on fire. No one should ever listen to you and give you credibility. 
House Oversight Committee Chairman Elijah Cummings was asked if President Trump broke the law. Based on what, looking at the text and listening to um, Mr. Cohen, it appears that he did. Cohen alleged that during the 2016 campaign, the president knew about WikiLeaks releasing hacked emails ahead of time. That contradicts President Trump's written testimony to special counsel Robert Mueller. Mark Liverman, CBS News. And after this break, we'll be back with your weather and sports. Hello, I'm Martin Sheen, welcoming you to a centennial celebration of the immortal Nat King Cole. Unforgettable. It's Nat King Cole's greatest songs on PBS. Saturday night at 9.30 on Public TV 13. News. I'm Todd Rose here to take a look at your weather. As you can see behind me, we got the NMU Academic Mall. And of course, no big surprise, snow everywhere as we've been seeing for about the last four or five months now. Taking a look at our current conditions, we are seeing some sun with 16 degrees out there for our temperature. Winds south-southwest at five miles an hour. Barometric pressure 30.16 and falling. Moving into tonight, partly cloudy skies will come out. See that moon a little bit. A low of 9 and winds west southwest at 5 miles an hour. Moving into tomorrow, p.m. snow. We'll see some snow coming in in the afternoon hours with a high of 25 with winds north at 5 miles an hour. Taking a look around the UP, starting up in Sault Ste. Marie, 11 degrees. Same thing down in Manistique with 11. Mostly sunny everywhere we're looking today across the whole of the UP. 6 degrees down in Escanaba, a little bit chillier down there than everywhere else. 12 in Menominee, 7 Iron Mountain. Moving on over to that western half of the UP. 12 degrees in uh, Ironwood and up in Houghton, 17 degrees and sunny. 15 degrees and sunny up back here in Marquette. And looking ahead for our weekend, Saturday we're looking at a high of 23, low of 3 with uh, mostly cloudy skies. Sunday we have a high of 10, a low of negative 3, so we're going to be dropping back below that zero point and partly cloudy skies. And Monday we're looking at a high of 8 and a low of 0 with cloudy skies. Well, Jillian, we're getting ready for spring break and things are not quite heating up outside, but we got some uh, wildcat action heating up on both the uh, basketball court and the hockey rink. That's right, Todd. Since we're sure heading into spring break, things are really uh, springing for the Wildcats. <laughs> rivalry, week, rivalry weekend in the Upper Peninsula kicks off tonight with a battle for first place in the GLIAC North Division. The NMU and Michigan Tech women's basketball teams will get things started at 5.30 p.m. at the SDC Gym in Houghton. The Wildcats and Huskies each hold a GLIAC record of 15-4, good for a first place tie atop the GLIAC North. NMU and MTU sit third and fourth in the overall GLIAC standings and will do battle again tonight for the first time since January 26th when the Huskies escaped the Berry Event Center with a 55-53 victory. NMU sits at 20-7 overall while Tech is at 19-8. And the men's teams will follow the women's game with a 7.30 p.m. tip-off. The NMU men took the January 26th contest by a score of 63-59 and sit at 10-9 in the GLIAC and 15-11 overall. The MTU men have struggled this season with a 6-13 mark in conference play and 11-15 record overall. NMU is locked into the GLIAC tournament and will be either the 6th, 7th, or 8th seed, currently sitting in a three-way tie with the Grand Valley State and Lake Superior State. This is the final night of the regular season for all GLIAC teams before the postseason tournament begins next Tuesday. And with that, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of Public Eye News, and we'll see you back here on Monday. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University, 